my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and the video you're about to undertake is all about this. So basically we're going to be looking at the unsafe situations procedure which has changed drastically over the last few years. We used to be working to this which is the unsafe situations procedure 7th edition which was run by GasSafe. We're now working to this one, which is the Unsafe Situations Procedure IGM G11, um, which was formerly Technical Bulletin 001, which is now run by IGEM. So, we're going to go right in depth with this, so let's stop messing about and just get on with it. Now, let's have a closer look at this Gas Industry Unsafe Situations Procedure IGM G11 and find out exactly where it came from. So an introduction. So the procedure has been created by a panel appointed by IGEM, and IGEM is the Institute of Gas Engineers and Managers, if you didn't know what that was. And the procedure is to be used by gas safe registered engineers and businesses when dealing with unsafe situations in domestic and commercial premises supplied by natural gas or LPG. The panel has used the Gas Safe Installation and Use Regulations 1998 and the primary responsibilities for compliance rests with the employer and uh, engineers if they're self-employed. The Gas Industry Unsafe Situations Procedure was produced to assist and support registered gas operatives to correctly identify, classify and deal with any unsafe situations. Gas operatives need to be aware that they have a duty under the regulations to take appropriate action regarding unsafe situations and that if they fail to act, then they will themselves be in breach of these regulations. We are currently working to Unsafe Situations Procedure IGEM G11, which replaced the Gas Industry Unsafe Situations Procedure Edition 7.1 in September 2018. IGEM took over legal ownership of the Unsafe Situations Procedure in February 2017 and IGEM G11 was introduced in March 2018 and came into force on the 1st of September 2018 to give gas operatives a clear procedure to classify an unsafe situation in one of two categories, which are immediately dangerous or ID or at risk or AR. Gas safe installation and use regulations does not apply to places in such as mines, quarries, sewerage works, agricultural premises and training and assessment centres unless they are used for domestic or residential purposes or as sleeping accommodation. However, other safety legislation applies such as the Factories Act and the Health and Safety at Work Act in these places. Classifications of unsafe situations. The unsafe situations procedure 7.1 from the 1st of July 2015 until September 2018 provided a single and clear message for immediately dangerous and at risk. The message was the same, danger do not use and this must be relayed to the customer. The actions for immediately dangerous and at risk did not change for the engineer. Not to current standards was removed from the procedure but has not been removed completely for engineers, engineers must still advise on not to current standards. Significant changes. So it is important that installers are aware of the changes under the guidelines, as some of them are quite significant. The not to current standards category was removed from the warning notice, and in certain circumstances turning off the gas in an at-risk situation or installation won't remove the risk of danger, they now have their own amended procedure for engineers must follow. The gas industry under safe situations procedure no longer lists installations that are RID or reportable. However, you are still required to notify under section 11 paragraph 1 or section 11 paragraph 2 under RID or. The danger do not use warning label has been introduced. So here is an example of the new warning label. And here is the new warning notices without the not current standards. 
So one of the significant changes in this IGM G11 is the changing of Appendix 5. So Appendix 5, which deals with the visual risk assessments, has been updated. It clearly sets out the recommended minimum checks an engineer should make in order to fulfil their legal requirements and compliance with the Health and Safety at Work Act and the Gas Safe Installation Use Regulations. The document takes pains to point out that the primary responsibilities for compliance with the legal duties rest with the employer, stressing that when certain employees, for example competent engineers, are allowed to exercise their professional judgment, the employer's primary responsibilities are not cancelled out, decisions made by the competent engineer should be supported and monitored and the level of responsibility given to them. Appendix 5, Visual Risk Assessments of Gas Appliances, this is the introduction. When working on a gas installation, there are occasions when gas engineers shall visually inspect gas appliances encountered. Appendix 5 gives guidance on when the visual checks are required. Gas engineers carrying out visual risk assessments of gas appliance or appliances have a minimum responsibility to ensure that the appliance or appliances do not contribute a danger. So, Table 3 of Appendix 5 shows a recommended minimum checks to enable compliance with the Health and Safety at Work Act and the Gas Safe Installation and Use Regulations that will need to be considered when carrying out visual risk assessments of existing gas appliance or appliances, where no other gas work on that particular appliance or appliances has been undertaken based on these three scenarios. Scenario 1. An appliance is encountered whilst working on another appliance, e.g. while servicing a central heating boiler, a gas cooker is installed in the same room. A visual assessment of the gas cooker should be undertaken. Number two, an appliance is encountered during a tightness test, e.g. on completion of a satisfactory tightness test where no air has been admitted into the system. And number three, an appliance is encountered when purging the system of air and relighting following work elsewhere on the installation, e.g. after undertaking work on the system that has allowed air to enter the system. Now this is what we've just been talking about. So you can actually see this Appendix 5 Table 3 is split into the three sections. So you can see from left to right, we've got an appliance is encountered whilst working on another. We have in the middle, an appliance is encountered during the tightness test. And at the end, you can see the appliance is encountered when purging the system of air and relighting following work elsewhere. So you can see these three sections are split to location, fluid, ventilation, signs of distress, stable and secure and flame picture. So these are the visual checks we need to be doing. You can also see now we've got ticks to say it's required. We've got a little star to say it's considered best practice. But you can see there is one space which is missing to say you don't need to do that. And that is checking the flame picture on an appliance which is encountered whilst working on another appliance. Why do we not want to do that though? <laughs> I would say... I would be doing that. So for best practice, I would definitely be checking the flame picture of a cooker, which is in the same room as the boiler, which I'm just servicing. So there are the checks we need to do according to this table three on Appendix 5. Now iGEM have produced this flow chart for us to follow. So we start on the start button. We walk through our scenarios following the arrows to find out exactly how we would categorise each situation. So that's the flowchart just to help us along the way. Now let's have a look at this classification of an ID unsafe situation. So an immediately dangerous situation relates to an appliance or installation which, if operated or left connected to the gas supply, is an immediate danger to life or property. These could be installations that fail tightness tests, so leaking gas, appliances that fail spillage tests, products of combustion coming out, 
or appliances which have serious fluid or ventilation faults which leads to products of combustion or gas leaking out or appliances with inoperative safety devices. Other serious ones are flueless appliances with poor combustion reading so failing their analyzer test, no regulator on a primary gas meter, that's a really big no-no, incorrect pressures at uh, the meter outlet which affects the safe operation of an appliance, or undersized gas pipe which again is affecting the safe operation of any appliances. So these are some of the ID situations which we should be looking out for. Now let's have a look at these classifications which are an at risk. Now one of the myths guys which was flying around is that all not to current standards are now at risk. That's absolute nonsense. They did not bump every not to current standard up to at risk but to be fair they did do a couple but not many. So an at risk situation relates to an appliance or installation where one or more faults exist and which as a result if operated may in the future constitute a danger to life or property. Examples of these at risk situations would be meter regulators or gas pipework that show signs of mechanical or corrosional damage. Other examples would be the use of hit and miss ventilation grills or damaged and incomplete flues which pass a flue flow test and spillage. This could actually include things like manufacturers at risks where certain manufacturers if you can see white showing on their flues um, they would categorise that as at risk but not every manufacturer says you can't have white showing on the flues. So always consult the manufacturer's instructions for this scenario. Now let's talk about NCS, not to current standards. Does it exist or does it not exist? Yeah, it exists guys. Yeah, it's it might have vanished out of iGEM G11. It's no longer in here. And it was also removed out of Edition 7. Uh, last time we saw it was in Edition 6. So uns uh, the unsafe situations procedure doesn't class not to current standards as dangerous. Okay, but there are still some not to current standards out there which we need to notify a responsible person with. Things like um, no F bonding on a gas meter. Okay. So what you would do in that situation is you would leave a little sticker saying you need to get an electrician to put some earth bonding on and you need to notify a responsible uh, person. So that would be one good not to current standard you still need to uh, notify. Um, but not on the warning notice, just on your commission sheet and the little sticker. Um, other things which used to be not to current standards have completely vanished. Um, things like uh, a, a line drawing for a secondary meter, that's used to be not to current standards, that's not gone any, that's not there anymore. But things like, which is strange, uh, a five minute warning label on a flueless water heater, if that sticker was missing, the five minute warning label, that was classed as not to current standards, that's now at risk. So that is one what has been bumped up. But we still have two not to current standards on flues and ventilation could be deemed at risk, but only flues and ventilation. But most ventilation faults now are at risk anyway. So that's um, iffy, but there you go. Um, so if it's something to do with clearances or, you know, there's, there's no earth bonding and, and, and it's too close to something for servicing, you don't add those two together, it's only for faults on flues and ventilation. So not to current standards still exists, okay, just to clarify, yes it still exists, gas safe straight from the horse's mouth, they issued it in one of their magazine, in the magazine. So we still need to look out for not to current standards. The only thing with not to current standards is when does something become not to the standard? That's, that's some of the things I don't get, but uh, anyway. 
If you can't find it in IGM G11 and you think it's a fault, then it must be not to current standards. So, not to current standards, still exists. Let's now have a look at the RIDO reporting. So, under the reporting of injuries, diseases and dangerous occurrence regulations, there is a requirement to report certain types of injuries and dangerous gas fittings to the HSE. This allows the HSC to monitor and investigate incidents that shares lesson learned in the interest of public safety. Now, it's not in IGMG 11. It doesn't tell you what to rid or. It basically, in a nutshell, says anything what's ID, uh, we should be rid or reporting. Um, but it's anything that's ID, what's been made ID because of somebody or lack of servicing, or uh, poor installation, or bodging. Um, they are ID um, and RIDO reporting. So, let's have a closer look at RIDO. Now this is the form you fill in for RIDO, or you can do it online. But this form has to be filled in and sent to the HSE within 14 days of the incident happening. The RIDOR Regulation 6 Paragraph 2 requires that gas businesses notify the HSC of installations which by reason of design, construction, manner of installation, modification or servicing pose a risk of death or injury to the gas user. The following list gives some such examples, so an uncapped open-ended gas pipe, an appliance that is spilling its products of combustion, An appliance that should be flued that are not flued. Appliances that are not suitable for the gas supply to an LPG boiler on a natural gas supply. Or appliances that have had their safety devices been made inoperative, so something like a high limit stat which has been disconnected. So RIDO 11 paragraph 1 gas incidents applies when someone has died, been unconscious or taken to hospital as a result of problems through gas or carbon monoxide. RIDO reportable then. RIDO 11 paragraph 2 dangerous gas fittings en uh, engineers to report any findings with gas fittings, flues or ventilation that could kill someone or make someone unconscious or hospitalise them. Now let's have a look at flues in a void. So the revised regulations and technical guidance TB008 requires inspection hatches to be fitted in properties where the flue is concealed within a void and cannot be inspected. The homeowner or landlord had until the 31st of December 2012 to arrange for inspection hatches to be installed. Any gas engineer working on affected systems after the 1st of January 2013 would be advising the homeowner that the system is at risk in accordance with the gas industry unsafe situations procedure and with the owner's permission will turn off the gas supply to the boiler so it cannot be used, fix a label and complete a warning notice. So, where no inspection hatches are fitted, the registered gas engineer will carry out simple risk assessment which should ensure that the risk from exposure to carbon monoxide is managed in the short term. The risk assessment includes looking for signs of leakage along the flue route, so any signs of condense, carry out a flue combustion analyst check and obtain satisfactory results, so flue integrity test, Check for the presence of suitable audible carbon monoxide alarm uh, or installing such alarms where they are not already fitted. As long as the boiler passes the series of safety checks and the risk assessment does not identify any concerns about its safety, it can be left on. Suitable inspection hatches will however need to be fitted to the ceiling or wall where appropriate. Wherever possible it is recommended that the hatches be installed ASAP and the boiler be turned off. 
Remember, you still need to do a warning notice and a sticker. Once inspection hatches have been fitted, the gas engineer will be able to make sure that the flue is safe and was installed in line with the relevant standards and the manufacturer's instructions. Always be safe, guys. Turn them off. Another method is the installation of a CO void monitoring safety shutoff system and regular service maintenance by the registered gas engineer. Uh, in exceptional circumstances, the installation of inspection hatches may not always offer the best nor a practical option to allow confirmation that the chimney flue system is complete, intact or effective. So a CO carbon monoxide monitoring system that isolates the gas supply in a fault situation can also be used. Standard CO alarms do not, repeat, do not meet this criteria. All voids containing a concealed flue should have at least one inspection hatch measuring at least 300 mm squared. And no flue joint within the void should be more than 1.5 meters from the edge of the nearest inspection hatch. Where possible, inspection hatches should be located at every change of direction. Where this is not possible, then the bends should be visible from both directions. If you are installing a brand new boiler or replacing a boiler, the void monitoring system alone now does not satisfy the requirements for the building regulations and standards and you must fit inspection hatches. So let's try and clear this situation up with this handy little flow chart what uh, Gas Safe have produced. This is Appendix 2. So let's start at the beginning. So the first thing we come to is a, a chimney flue system concealed. So we've either got no, so it says subject to the appropriate operational safety checks in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Gas safe installation use regulation 26.9. The boiler can be deemed safe and left operational. Okay. But if it is, is the chimney flue system routed through adjacent property? So if it was yes, can access be gained to the adjacent property? So we cannot do this now. But if it was installed before 2013 and you are servicing it and checking it, then we follow this side of the route. Okay. But the video is going to go on and on if we start going this way. So, is it going through a property? We'll say no. So, is there acceptable means of examining the entire chimney flue system, i.e. inspection hatches, CO alarms installed? So we've got yes, then we can see it's safe. If no, is there a CO monitoring system installed? If yes, is a CO system installed and operation correctly? No, we're going to classify it as at risk. And then we need to carry out these checks. We'll look at these in a minute. So does the ceiling enclo uh, enclosure indicate any signs of distress along the route of the chimney flue system which cannot be attributed to other causes e.g. water leaks etc. If we say no we're classifying it as risk and then we're carrying out this. If yes classify as immediately dangerous a fixer do not use warning label and complete a warning notice. So if we get to this system and it is failing its flue integrity okay um, and it is leaking the products of combustion and it is leaking water in this concealed we're classifying it as immediately dangerous okay but if no we're classifying it as at risk and we follow this so carry out the appropriate operational safety checks including the combustion performance and confirm the boiler is operating co correctly affix a warning label and with the responsible person's permission turn off the boiler and complete the warning notice now because it's at risk if the customer doesn't allow you to turn it off then we can leave it on fill our warning notice in but we must recommend to the customer the installation of CO alarms where the chimney flue system passes through adjoining properties or communal areas. Recommend to the responsible person the building, the inspection of suitable um, CO protection equipment. Check the operation of any existing CO alarms. So 
we can at risk it. We can only leave it on because we're at risking it and the customer's telling us we're not. But you must get them to sign the warning notice and tell them that if they continue to use the actual appliance, the boiler, then we could be ending up in serious trouble. So that's pretty much what they say on this guidance flues and voids. So you can download this from Gas Safe and keep this on your van because you're going to need it because it is really helpful to help you understand how we're dealing with these situations, whether we're IDing it or whether we're at risking it. Okay, but remember, this is one of the few situations where if they're if you're at risking it, you can leave it turned on and make sure the customer knows everything what's going on. Explain to them that it's pretty dangerous and it's going to need regular servicing and checking. But if it's a brand new boiler you're installing, guys, you can't follow this chart. You must fit inspection hatches. So let's look at the procedure for dealing with this unsafe situation. So the first one we're going to look at is for dealing with an ID or immediate danger. So with the customer's agreement, attempt to rectify the situation. Always try and fix first before you start disconnecting. So where this is not possible, explain to the customer that the appliance has to be disconnected until the fault is rectified. Attach a do not use notice to the appliance. Complete a warning notice and ask the customer to sign it as a record of receipt. With the customer's permission, disconnect and seal the appliance from the gas installation. If the customer does not allow you, you must turn off the appliance and make immediate contact with the gas emergency contact centre, so you're ringing Cadent, explain the situation and obtain a job reference number, making a note of the time of your call and who you spoke to about the situation. Now let's have a look at dealing with an at-risk situation. So with the customer's agreement, attempt to rectify the situation. Where this is not possible, explain to the customer that the appliance should not be used and that continue to use the appliance would be at the customer's risk and may contravene the regulations. Attach a do not use notice to the appliance, complete a warning notice and ask the customer to sign it as record of receipt. With the customer's permission, turn off the appliance. If permission to turn off is refused, the customer's attention should be brought to the fact that they may be an offence to continue to use the appliance. If the customer refuses to sign the warning notice, it is recommended that it is recorded on the warning notice and you tell the customer, do not use the appliance. Now then, these are some of the changes made to the not to current standards in edition 6 to IGMG 11. Remember in 7 we took out the not to current standards. So 2.5, 6 edition, no earth bonding at the gas meter, was not to current standards. 3.19 G11, Fire Guidance and Technical Bulletin 102. 2.6 in the 6th edition, Meter Regulator Not Sealed, again was not to current standards. It's been removed from G11, so that makes it still not to current standards. 2.7 in the 6th edition, Medium Pressure Without a Test Valve, was not to current standards. It's been removed from G11, so it's still not to current standards. So 2.9, 6th edition, no gas supply line drawing with a secondary meter, not to current standards. Again, removed, so it's still not to current standards in G11. Now this is a sticker. You will uh, stick on your gas meter or the meter bracket or however you're going to do it. You can even give it to the customer when they have no earth bonding. Now then, 5.13 in the 6th edition, pipework passing through a cavity wall with no sleeve or seal, not to current standards. In 3.11 in G11, it's now at risk if it shows signs of corrosion or damage. Uh, 5.14 in the 6th edition, inadequately supported pipework was not to current standards. In 3.11 G11, now at risk if the pipe shows signs of damage or corrosion. Uh, 6.8 in the 6, cross ventilation in a compartment on an open fluid appliance. It's been removed from G11, 
So that means it must still be not to current standards. Now for the big one. So 7.11 through to 7.16 on the 6th edition. Open fluid faults not to current standards, but two faults together made it at risk. Now, big changes. 5.9 in G11. Now, open fluid with one fault or more is now classed as at risk on open fluid appliances. So be aware of that. So 8.5 on the 6th. Flu terminated, not to manufacture's instructions on a fan flu, not to current standards. 1.4 G11 now, must check to see if you've got more than 10 parts per million CO entering the room. Let's finish off with the last few. So 10.13 on the 6th, appliances with a PRV but not an overheat stat on a sealed system was not to current standards. Now if we've got any of those missing, so a PRV or an overheat stat missing, it's now at risk. That's 7.13 G11. 11.14 on the 6th, flueless water heater without this 5 minute label was not to current standards, we now know it's at risk. And the final one, 12.76, flueless uh, fire with the air vents in the wrong location, so uh, not a metre away, that's now been bumped up to at risk. So that was a look at how the unsafe situations procedure has changed from edition 6 through to the one we're using now, the iGEM G11. This is a free download guys off the GasSafe uh, website, so make sure you get that downloaded. Now what we're going to finish off with now is a little quiz at the end. So I'm going to be putting up some slides and we're going to see if we've been listening and we're going to categorise these pictures I'm going to be putting up. So, let's get on with these slides then. Now, question number one. This scenario represents the flu liner connection to a ridge tile adapter in a loft space. So, assume that everything's installed correctly, um, but we've got this flu liner on show in the loft. So how would we categorize this? Would it be ID, AR, and would we need to rid or it? So that's question number one. Let's see if you were correct. So incorrect use of a flexible flu liner will be assessed as at risk under iGEM G11 section 5.9. One fault on an open flu appliance is now at risk. So your answer would be at risk. Did you get it right? Let's have question two. Question number two. This situation represents a vitiation sensing device on an instantaneous water heater being removed from its correct location. So, removing a safety device, what would we categorise this under iGEM G11? And the correct answer is, the vitiation sensing device has been unseated to prevent it operating to shut the heater down. So, we will be categorising this as ID, immediately dangerous, under iGEM G11 7.4. This also would be rid or reportable. Did you get the answer right? Question number three. This scenario represents a primary gas meter installed in a non-emergency situation. Have a look at the picture, see what faults you can find and see whether it's at risk, ID, or whether you need to report it to Rido. The answer to number three, in a non-emergency situation, having no handle on the ECV would be assessed as at risk situation. That's iGEM G11 3.5. But did you also notice there's no earth bonding, 
and there's no on off label on the anaconda to tell the customer which way to turn the ECV on and off and the label on the front of the gas meter is also incorrect. Did you get every one? Question number four. This scenario represents a radiant gas fire. Assume that the gas fire is correctly installed to the builder's opening and the gas fire is connected to the gas supply with a cooker hose. So can you connect a fire with a cooker hose? If not, is it at risk? Is it ID? And do you have to report it to Rideau? Now, did you get question number four correct? A fluid appliance should be connected to the gas supply via a rigid pipe, not a cooker hose. So this is an at-risk situation, iGEM G11 7.11. Now let's have a look at question number five. Take a really good look at this photograph. This situation just represents a primary gas meter. So this is you going to the job, doing your visual inspections. Are there any faults you can see on this installation? If there are, are they at risk? Are they ID? And do you need to rid all them? What is it? Now, did you get question number five correct? So this installation has no label on the ECV to tell the customer how to turn it on and off and also the ECV falls to on. There is no eco-potential bonding on the installation gas pipe on the other side of the outlet pipe and the label is wrong on the front of the gas meter. What would you categorize this as? Well your answer would be for all those faults not to current standards. You could see in iGEM G11 3.19 it would say to leave a notice for the earth bonding. So that's the answer. Not to current standards. Yes guys, still exists. How are you doing so far? Have you got five out of five? Anyway, let's have a look at number six. So this photograph represents the installation of a primary gas meter on a natural gas supply. What faults can you find if there are any? And if there are any faults, are you going to ID them? Are you going to at risk them? And are you going to rid or it? So is there any faults on this primary gas meter installation? Have a close look. Now, did you get this one correct? So the lack of a regulator on a primary meter would be classed as ID, that's iGEM G11 2.1, and you would also be rid or reporting this. But did you notice the other faults? That there's a thumbnail gas valve being used as an ECV, not allowed on natural gas. You've also got the bracket, is upside down and not secured to anything. And there's also no earth bonding within 600. The meter is also stood on the floor, not secure. Did you get them all? Hopefully you did. Let's have a look at question number seven. So in this scenario, it represents a gas installation pipe downstream of the gas meter feeding a gas appliance. So I'll have a look at the picture. What are we going to categorize this as? Is it ID? Is it at risk? Is it not to current standards? Would you rid or it? Or would you just leave it? What would you do in this situation? Now, did you get question seven right? So this is an open end. Even though the gas valve is in the closed position, this is an ID situation, iGEM G11 3.1, and this is also RIDO reportable. Okay. 
So never ever leave an open end on a gas pipe. It's a definite no-no. Now then, question number eight. So this scenario represents an air vent or an air grill to an open flued boiler. This is what we would class as a hit and miss vent. So what we're classifying this as, is it at risk? Is it ID? Is it immediately dangerous? Is it not to current standards? How do we need to rid or it? What do you think? Now, did you get question eight correct? So this is an air vent which can be closed. So if it's closable or got a fly screen on it, or if it is um, less than 90% of the required ventilation, then this would be classed as an at-risk situation. So iGEM G11 4.3, anything, any faults with the vent would be categorised as at-risk. It's only if the appliance is spilling or fails, uh, any kind of test like that, then it's the appliance what would become ID the ventilation is still at risk. Now, how are you doing so far? Have you got them all right? So let's have a look at question number nine. So this situation represents the gas installation pipe downstream of the gas meter. So this is that gas pipe we saw at the beginning of this little show. Uh, and we put a push fit stop end on top of it. So is that clusters perfect? Is it at risk? Is it ID? Is it not to current standards? How do we need to rid or it? Are we allowed to put this push fit stop end on the end to make it a sealed end? And did you get number nine correct? So this is a gas pipe has been sealed off with an inappropriate fitting. So it will therefore be assessed as ID, immediately dangerous, under iGEM G11 3.2. This is also rid or reportable, so never use any push fit plastic stop ends to cap off a gas supply, ever. And the final question, number 10. This situation represents two gas pipes passing through a cavity wall which isn't sleeved. So, can we put a gas pipe through a cavity wall? with no sleeves, can we put a, ca a gas pipe through any wall, whether it's a plasterboard wall, whether it's single brick wall, um, without it being sleeved? So, what's your answer? Is it at risk? Is it ID? Is it not to current standards? And do we need to rid all the beggar who installed it? And the answer to our final question, number 10, these gas pipes have not been sleeved when they've passed through the cavity wall, so they're therefore not to current standards because there's no sign of damage and corrosion. But if there is signs of damage or corrosion, then that would be deemed as at risk, iGEM G11 3.11, and obviously if it was leaking gas, it would be immediately dangerous. So how have you gone on? Have you got 10 out of 10? If you got 10 out of 10, give yourself a pat on the back. You know about the unsafe situations. And if you've only got 1 out of 10, I think you need to watch the video again. Now, that is the end of this video on IGM G11, the unsafe situations procedure. So if you've enjoyed this video, why don't you give us a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you like the way I've done the video at the end with the little quiz, if you want any more of those, stick a comment down at the bottom and I'll see what I can do. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then please subscribe because it shows me you've cared. Or leave, uh, hit that notification bell because it'll let you know when I release videos every Wednesday. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and stay safe guys over these hard times at the moment. Cheers guys.